I, I want to first begin our program by asking about some news about the AstraZeneca vaccine and new concerns about safety as Canadians are, uh, some of them about to get that AstraZeneca shot. Denmark is now suspending the AstraZeneca vaccine for two weeks because they're concerned that it might cause blood clots. Italy recently banned a batch, citing adverse effects. I think there are now nine countries who have paused their use of AstraZeneca. Is Canada concerned about this and will Canada re-examine its usage of the AstraZeneca vaccine in light of these situations? Well, thank you for the question. And, and vaccine safety is of paramount importance. So Health Canada uh, has been in close contact with the European uh, Medicine Agency. And based on what we've heard, um, while some of these events have occurred after immunization, they don't believe that it's the vaccine that caused it but it's important for them to get to the bottom of this. So I think they've taken a bit of a precautionary approach, which is great. Um, the batch of vaccines that will be used, we don't have that batch of vaccines. So at this moment in time, it's just a matter of keep sharing information from the European um, um, countries and uh, regulators. Uh, but for now, uh, we're carrying on because uh, we don't have this batch of vaccines uh, in our country. So you don't have, Canada's not using it, uh, a batch. So there was concern that this could be a bad batch. How did Canada determine that this was, that this could be a batch and not sort of more, a more general risk that's causing this? Well, I think you have to look at both. But I think it's a matter of sharing information with uh, uh, the Europeans. What is being detected is not um, um, something that uh, has previously been uh, sort of highlighted. So it's important to investigate. But the, as I said, the, the, the vaccine, uh, any events following vaccine isn't necessarily caused by it. What the Europeans are telling us is that it's not an, occurring at any unexpected rate above the usual uh, mm. incidents for these events. So these clotting events, um, they're not seeing it um, as a, a increase above what is normally expected in a population. Mm and they're following that up, of course, uh, carefully. Right, but, but I, I guess it's enough for a number of countries, including Denmark and, and eight or nine others, to pause for a while. I, I just, Canadians are, again, I don't want to contribute to vaccine hesitancy, but there is genuine concern. Canada, of course, is, has to rush to put out almost 300,000 doses of AstraZeneca before the expiry date at the end of April. Is that necessity impacting the decision not to pause the use of it, not to say we'll take a two-week pause and investigate? That's not at all the reason. I mean, the reason is um, the data that we're receiving from the, the European um, Medicine Agency and other countries, and that this is uh, likely not a result of the vaccine. It is not above the usual instance. So this is not an abnormal signal. However, uh, the other consideration is that uh, the vaccine that we're using is not manufactured in the same place as the, um, right. what, what was being used. Okay, so I'm just on last quick point. So you, if, if Canadians ask you, I'm going to get the AstraZeneca vaccine. I've read all these reports. What would you say to a Canadian who's about to take it? And, and would you be happy to take that vaccine right now? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but if you have a path history of any medical condition or... Uh, allergies or reactions um, to previous vaccine components, just please do talk to your health provider. Otherwise, um, these are safe and effective vaccines, and I wouldn't hesitate to take the AstraZeneca vaccine tomorrow if it was my turn. COVID-19 variants are accounting for 40% of the cases in the province of Ontario and increasing numbers in Quebec, increasing numbers in British Columbia and other provinces. In your view, is Canada on track for a third wave of COVID-19 caused by the variants of concern? Well, they um, are called variants of concern for a reason, because they're a bit like an accelerant to your uh, epidemic curve. And so right now they are, they are of concern. And the results coming out of Ontario uh, means that we have to be hyper vigilant to what actually happens, uh, particularly if um, jurisdictions begin to relax any measures. So now is not the time to let everything go. You have to be really cautious go slow and keep doing really good testing and contact tracing. Otherwise, this, um, this thing could run away from us mm -hmm. again, uh, given the uh, variance in our midst. 
The U.S. Centers of Disease Control and Prevention recently issued new guidelines for vaccinated Americans, uh, saying who can hang out with whom without social distancing after you've had two shots of the dose. Uh, some states are saying, hey, remove masks, let's go, get, let's get back to normal. Is Canada considering issuing new guidelines for vaccinated Canadians? Uh, and, and what do you make of easing up on these, mass, these, these uh, protocols on masks and social distancing? Well, of course, um, everyone is interested in, in those kind of guidance, but really for Canada, now is not the time. We've only just started our vaccine programs. And so the key focus for us is to get people vaccinated as fast as possible. And so, but we do have to keep looking at guidance as more people mm -hmm. are fully vaccinated. And, but even the most effective vaccines, of course, are not 100%. So uh, you do have to keep uh, personal protective measures like, I think, ma mask wearing um, for a significant number of months ahead. However, it's really important, for example, long-term care homes. If they've been fully vaccinated, you've got good protocols in place, these will need to be adjusted, um, you know, I think quite soon so that um, the, the seniors who have been feeling isolated uh, can get more in touch with each other and with their families. So I think one might expect those measures to be mm. reviewed. Uh, but, but right now, uh, we've got to get everyone vaccinated uh, as fast as possible. And as you just said, the variants. Uh, if you let go of some of these fundamental foundational measures now and the epidemic accelerates, you've then taken a couple of steps back. Doc, before I let you go, because we're at this inflection point of one year since the WHO declared the pandemic, and a lot has happened, in your, could you tell us the two most fundamental lessons you've learned as you reflect on the last year and the challenges ahead? Uh, first of all is the need to absolutely support the most vulnerable in our society. So. I'm talking about health equity, but seniors in particular and long-term care homes and seniors in our communities. That's the mass of lessons learned. And, and we, they, they, we got even more outbreaks in the second uh, resurgence in the fall winter time. We cannot repeat this again. So that's why all these efforts are made to, to provide vaccination to the highest priority groups, the highest risk groups. I think um, that's probably the, the, the top lessons learned. Secondly, is science involved and trying to communicate that evolution of evidence and translate it to policy, but translate it to the public is a um, key uh, challenge for everyone. And so we have to keep doing better and better at that. You've just seen it play out in the area of vaccines. And we will expect more and more data to come up on the effectiveness of the vaccines and how, for example, how uh, they may reduce transmission or how long or durable that protection is. So I think we, um, that is just so fundamental mm. in, in making sure the public uh, comes along with the advice. Yeah, science evolves. Uh, thanks for taking time on a very busy schedule, Dr. Tam. Always appreciate it. Thanks.